السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین نبی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دی برادر اینڈ سسٹرز ویلکم ٹو انسپائر بائی اسلام اگین الحمد للہ جسٹ لائک ایوری ادر ایپیسوڈ وی ہیو اے اسپیشل گیسٹ ٹو نائٹ فار یو ان دس ایپیسوڈ وی گن اسپیک ٹو بد عبد الرحمن Um, and we'll find out how he actually inspired by Islam and he became one of the part of the Ummah. And we are hoping and we are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah accept us and everybody around watching us. And let's learn and benefit ourselves and the Ummah insha'Allah. So without any delay, I'll go to Bad Abdul Rahman. Bad Abdul Rahman, welcome to our show and thank you for making time for us. Welcome. If you could tell us uh, your full name before um, Islam, what was your full name? My full name was Piotr Karpik before I came to Islam. MashaAllah. Um, and welcome to the, the Big Ummah, MashaAllah. Brother Peter, why did you decide to uh, become Muslim, if I could ask? I would say partially maybe I decided, but in some way that was Allah guidance that I came to Islam. I went through many philosophies and many religions before and somehow my path was guided to Islam and when I took shahada started pray I established my prayer I chosen this religion in some way inside something new this is my way so and I didn't want it to change anymore so you treat it like a nature it just like is blend in for you that's how you is that what yes you was perfectly designed for mind kind of mind and heart subhanallah brother peter a lot of people we see um, when they take shahada so what was through going through your mind just before the shahada i'm talking about day before or, or, or imagine a, an hour before because almost like you take into a new route and you might have to sacrifice your lots of things You know, you can't drink anymore, you can't gamble anymore, you can't do womanizing anymore, you know, you can't cheat. You know, you know there are a lot of lists of it. Even the food is where you'll be changing. So, was it a difficult choice for you to become Muslim? It wasn't difficult at all. Uh, actually, it was natural. I went through many obstacles in my life, and that, that was a very long period of time. And I changed about four religions before before I came to sh to Islam and it was like spontaneous I came to mosque first time second day I took shahada and I bent down on my knees started cry it had it has to happen for me that was too much my cup was full of sorrow suffering pain I wanted this relief. So when you say when you done your shahada and you just cry, um, what was going through your head? Did you have any some like a relief? Is, is, is that by, or in Arabic they call it sakun within your heart? Is that what it is like? Imagine you uh, you haven't seen your mother for a long, long time. Normally, when you see after a few years, when you see them, you can't help it. You keep crying. Why? It's not a cry of, it's a cry of joy. Is that what you're trying to say? Actually, no. Uh, spiritual journey is very individual. It's sometimes instant when you feel a relief. Sometimes you feel gradually improvements, like something slowly, slowly surrender, something slowly getting, opening up in your heart. In my case, it's this way, like, since quite a long time, something opening up in my heart. Subhanallah. Like my heart becoming softer and softer. If I could ask in your spiritual journey, I'm talking about when you've done your shahada, lots of uh, many people actually went through the amazing experience in their life. They see unusual things. Not everybody, not everybody. Did you have unusual things? Yes. That telling you do this, do that, those signs? Because Allah said to find me, I'll show you my signs. So yes. sometime. Definitely. At the age of around 20, when I had 20, now I have 40. That was first sign like Allah show me where I am. 
what is my state of mind and heart and what I can become, where I can go. That was the first time I seen them two differences. And I understood my present state is not right, my present state is not correct, that I can be much more better version that I am at that time, that I, I was at that time. Later on, it's happened again when I've been in Buddhist environment, I practice Buddhism. And for Buddhism, I had something like empowerment. After empowerment, my mind become quiet, almost completely quiet. Three days of total peace, like there was no troublemaker in my mind for three days. That was something beautiful, but probably still not this. Because so when you, when you studied Buddhism, or when yes. you practiced Buddhism, did you look for God, that the creator of the universe? Actually, inside of me, something new, even if I was in Buddhism envi environment, there was God, there is God, there is some, some higher power. Uh, that was something like this, that was inside part of me that, that knew God is. I didn't understand this well, but somehow I felt that oneness. Yes. Because there is no other, apart from the Creator, there is nobody claimed that I created the universe. Yes. Nobody. Even people have been, those deity have been worshipped, you could name it like Jesus and others worship. they never claimed that I created the universe. I stabilized the nature of the universe. Only thing in the Quran we'll find is there is a Creator, uncreated, and He's saying, I created it, I own it, that's mine and I give it to uh, um, people who I want. And he also says, I am the, also the judger after your death. You know, I, I am the owner. So all your struggles you went through, actually this is a missing point. You said like, there's something that within you that is a bigger power, m more powerful, has to be one. Um, logically, has to be one as well. You can't have two creators because it begins from somewhere. And the creation we see, this is a creation. Creator and creation is different. It can't be the same. If I'm the creator of this table, me and the table is different. It can't be the same. So as a Muslim, we see people are actually struggling to find the creator and worshipping his creation. So our job as a Muslim is now, we don't worship the creation, we cre worship the creator. Unlike us, nothing like his creation. When you done your, uh, when you took that step, did it affect your family? Yes. Because lifestyle is di course. new and different. Uh, I found out quite many obstacles in this matter. When I took Shahada, my wife left me. She went to another man. She took my children with her just before December, two years ago. I'm so sorry to ask you this. I know it's a personal, uh, but um, it's okay. thank you for sharing. It's okay. Uh, I have many sometimes misunderstanding with people I used to know, like they don't understand that Islam is something very precious, Allah that Allah. it's changing people, Allah it's Allah. helping people, and those people here who practice this deen, practice Islam, are very pure in their heart and mind, they are very good, and what people see in them, this is distortion of their mind often. People not see real, people see through their mind, which is all often contaminated, impure. That's why they have those deviated opinions about people, about Islam. Subhanallah. Um, first time you prayed, if you could share your experience. Because this is the only religion actually do uh, complete prayers. When we look at the um, holy books, we're talking about, um, as a Muslim, we believe in Torah, Injil, and Quran, and Jabur. We get to see that all the prophets actually they prayed, standing, bowing, putting their head in the floor, um, and they praying to Allah. So we believe as a Muslims, we're doing um, complete prayer. We're doing everything, and, and also glorifying like the Creator. So if you could tell me your first time you prayed, when you put your head in the floor, what was it like and what was going through your head? For my first prayer, to be honest, was the 
time when I took Shahada. That was a real even person next to me, which was called, his name is Santiago. He somehow introduced me to Islam. And when I bow and put my entire body to the, to the ground, bow, that was my first prayer that was real, authentic, that wasn't artificial. And part of my heavy load I carried inside was taken off. I felt something changed at that time. I didn't understand what, what that was, but something changed. That was very subtle. Subhanallah. It's, you know, brother, I've been a Muslim, a born as a Muslim. Uh, in your voice, in, in, in your sound, it shows how much you actually means what you say. It, it shows the love and respect for the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And um, some people give all their life just to get that feelings with the Creator. And you, you had it in the first day. You know, subhanAllah, you, you just had it in the first day. I met lots of people, subhanAllah, they will pray all night. You know, all night. And they say, the satisfaction I get compared to anything in the universe is nothing for me. Because I, I felt the Creator. And his life, he can, I, can, I can connect with him, subhanAllah. So you had it in your first day. Um, if you could show, share your... Um, expectation from the Muslim community when you've done your Shahada. So, like, how did they welcome you and how did they help you? Before I came to Islam, I've been in four different religions, so I can compare that Muslim environment is one of the strongest environments which keep them, they are keep together. They are eat together. This is very beautiful how they maintain everything how they carry on everything. It is like Prophet Sunnah and they follow Prophet Sunnah. Subhanallah. Uh, and what most attracted me to Islam, when I started sitting with brothers and they invite me to eat with them, this warmness and welc welcomeness, this, this, this was first thing which invite me, this warm-heartedness of those, those brothers I've been at the beginning with. That was major thing which attracted me, and later on I discover other other things. Still discovering. Subhanallah. What do you, th what do you think? Because mis Islam is a very misunderstood religion in, in 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 Europe or any other part of the country, the world, because of uh, negative uh, um, new news keep on coming. Extremism, extremists, suicide bombers, and you name them. Also, some uh, scholars are very radicals, we say. Um, what do you think that we could do as a Muslim community to show the real Islam to the humanity? We have to be humans. <laughs> humans, we have to show heart and love. Love is the most important factor. Uh, because love can co conquer any fear and any bad things in life. Love is most important part, I would say. Uh, if we have love, we have no enemies in this world. So if we all could become loving and in the same way wise, that could be great for this globe, for this universe. So, so do you think um, the Muslim is understood? The real message of Islam, like is, is love and respect, respect uh, others and is peace? Very often, no. Very often, no. Uh, they are people which are on the way of purification. They just slowly, gradually changing. Some people understood that serving and helping another human beings is one of the major factors for change. And to be honest, I am one of those because I didn't understand this for a very long time. Now I slowly changing inside and starting understanding that in order to be better human being, you need to serve, you need to help another human being, you need to be warm towards others, respectful. Have you studied the life of the Prophet yourself? Have you studied his, uh, or how much do you know about him? Because we actually see him as a role model. 
Yes. And we actually, <coughs> his life is amazing. If, if someone reads the whole thing, not just pick and choose, if you study from the beginning to the end, and you will find he's one of the best human beings you can think of. And uh, um, he was voted by one of the writers as well, that he's the number one uh, um, human being. Um, have you read his full uh, biography or so? I didn't read full biography. I'm still on the way to, to carry on with the Quran. I read twice in English. Subhanallah. Now I'm reading in Polish, Polish with transliteration. So it is explaining me more and more and I getting information more and more and about Prophet as well there is some some explanations. So I would say it took me a while to open up my heart just a little and as well to to my mind to become a little clear so I could get information more, more easily. But sometimes we've been in Trumoli, we've been in for very, very, in something like this, very, very time, so things come out, out of balance completely. Person become like dull, dull person become like, go into completely wrong direction. So it takes time before Allah changes us, amend us, correct us, rebuild us. It takes time. Sometimes it is instant, but maybe this depends how quickly you can open to love and surrender. If you could share your experience of reading Quran, so I, I don't speak Arabic myself, so I, I um, so you, for you is well, I done in English. So, first time you read it, what you understood, and the second time you read it, how did you understood? Because most of the people I'm from, then if they're not a Muslim, they will just they might read the book, but would they understand the whole message? Because the message is very deep. Message has a lot of layers. To understand. So how was it for you first time and the second time if you could share because a lot of people are maybe reading first time they're saying oh I don't understand because it's like it's a poetic it's got um, they call it ring composition the first line the second line third line will mix up then you got to mix it up you got to get understand the whole picture then you understand everything so tell us your first time and second time. Uh, my first time and second time when I read Quran in English. Even if it's negative, use it, no yes, worries. So it we is learn. not very well, it was not very well understood. Okay. Like it was not fully taken in. Because okay. from my experience, it depends from openness in your heart. When your heart is open and mark my, your mind clear, clear, then you are able to take Quran inside. You are able to take it into your heart and have to be read through your heart not through your mind, through your heart. When this is the case, when your heart is open, then you can start understanding message, where is wha what is talking about and what this does inside. That the subtle changes to the, to the mind. You can feel it when something is amended for better in your mind from time to time. So first time, what, the, what message did you get first time? Imagine whole thing, what did you understood from the Quran first time and second time what did you understood? First time Within. it was just like re reading the book. Okay. I read lots of information and I seen lots of positive information in this, but that, that was just information. Okay. Now there is first third time when I read Quran and like I saying there is, I still not fully understand this because this is probably no, no, it takes long time. deepness and it's deepness journey, and deepness, lots of liars. But it's going in and like I'm saying, it's amending the mind, it's changing something inside. Subhanallah. Uh, so I can express myself in much more better way. I can be much more uh, productive, much more a warm human being towards others. Mashallah. Just changing humans inside, from inside. Now you're making better sense, yes. third time. I think I, for me it's the same thing. When I um, started reading in my own language, like in English, now, and um, I went to second Ruku, and he was talking about um, hypocrites. 
And he was, he, he was like someone talking to me. And I read a line and I stop. I read another line and I stop. I was just like, who is this person who knows me so well? And how come it relates to me? Like I think I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong path. I'm doing wrong. And honestly, I, I, when I finished that ruku, I was just crying like a baby. and said, subhanAllah, you know, someone's telling me that I was very wrong. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Do this. Don't pretend, don't pretend, don't pretend. Do this. You can't get away with it. Like even if you just say, I believe. In Allah and the Akhir, it's not enough. I need to see it. I'll test you. And I will show you the real thing. So I was, for me, it was like an eye-opener myself. Is well, you're true. Um, as a Muslim now, your duty or as a responsibility as a Muslim um, to spread this message to others. Um, do you, how would you like to do that? How would you do it? We can do it verbally. We can do it even now when I'm sitting here and speaking to the public, to the people, that everything you do have consequences. Subhanallah. Every single act you do, every single thought you going through your mind, what you're thinking, have consequences. If this is impacted with negativity, then it will come back at some point of time. Nothing is forgiven, nothing is forgotten. Everything is recorded like in your mind. So my message, my message is to people to just go a spiritual way and start practice, start pray. Because more we delay it, more troubles we often preparing for ourselves. And we can, with help of Allah, Allah can change us. We can, we can be much more better human beings than we are now. We can avoid most of the troubles in life than we experiencing just by praying, fasting, whatever is prescribed. We can live a life full of peace, peace, full of calmness, away of those troubles we most of us experience. Life can be peaceful. Zazakumallah khairan for your time and um, I really enjoyed talking to you, my brother. And it was just like you, you actually, uh, mashallah, everything's coming from your heart, honestly. Every word you say, it's just like you talking to me with, with peace within your heart. That's, that's amazing. Uh, may Allah bless you, may Allah make la your life easy, and may Allah take us all to the paradise that we can live together. Dear brothers and sisters, we are just about to finish our interview today. And um, please make dua for us and make dua for everyone around you, everyone around the world, the needy people, and also if you have enough to give to the needy people, mashallah, we should. So may Allah bless the universe. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.